Good morning or afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us on our second live stream out here in uh, the USA. Oh, why am I getting a feedback? I don't know. That's straight. Oh, I know why. Because because I've got YouTube running in the background. Rookie mistake. So, so this is live. This is live. <laughs> just to check it was all working. Anyway, so thanks for joining us for our second live stream from the USA. Uh, since we last saw you, we were over in Salt Lake City, I believe. Uh, but since then, we jumped on a plane and we ended up over flying to, oh no, we didn't jump on a plane, we drove, didn't yep. we? Yeah, we drove up to uh, Jackson, Wyoming, and been to a few spots since then. So the plan for today is to talk about where we've been, uh, do a little bit of editing. We've also got a special guest that we're going to bring on later as well, who is Solomon Smith from Smith & Co Galleries. We're going to use Capture On Live uh, to show uh, Solomon uh, some images which he can choose from, and then Paul's going to drop that into an AR model, and with a bit of audience participation... It's going to be interactive. It's going to be interactive. You're going to be able to see uh, the image that Solomon picks that's been put into the AR model on your wall at home. So as a way to visualize live. how live and nothing's going to go wrong and nothing's going to go wrong. So that's uh, that's the plan, at least anyway. So I thought it'd be interesting for you to see a capture on live working between a remote collaborator because Solomon is over uh, in the UK and also the AR model working with a picture that we took here in your own space. So if it works, fingers crossed, I think it will be, It'll be good. It will be quite interesting. So. Where so we're in cowboy we country. We are in cowboy country now. Very much so. Um, and that was a beautiful morning, yesterday mm -hmm. morning, at yesterday about morning. five o'clock in the morning, um, yeah. up the road. So um, we we can run through some BTS stuff, and actually we're going to yeah. start with, just like we did the other day, so, okay. um, we're going to start with sort of the photography bits of it and the photography elements of it. Yeah. Um, and a couple of things, again, that we've noticed, um, <laughs> which is we as photographers um, sometimes are fantastic ambassadors for spaces and sometimes we can be the biggest pain in the whatsoever whatever's um, <laughs> yes. in, in the world and and it's one of the things we I talk quite a lot on workshops um, with people we often get frustrated with people that are in our shot they're equally frustrated that you might be in their shop or they might not be a photographer and they don't want you yeah. anywhere near it anyway because they're mm -hmm. just there to surprise surprise look at the view it's kind of cool yeah um, so here's a couple of, of sort of things that we picked up on so Number one, um, there is a tendency uh, in the last couple of days that we've noticed for photographers who are mm. there to take their shots and then go directly in front of all the other photographers when they're finished, yeah. um, which is kind of weird. Now, that's, not, that's not a bad scenario <laughs> because you know, it's, it's free land. People can do yeah, whatever they want. People can go wherever they want. What's yeah. quite sad in this particular case, um, and you can't see the, the person's face luckily, but mm. um, we watched uh, this guy spend an hour doing that an hour mm -hmm. um, and everyone else in fact there were probably what 20 30 people yeah, up, up top. behind us yeah. everyone else now has to heal that guy out yeah uh, which is fine we can do it it's, it's not there's not an issue but the interesting bit for me was this guy was a photographer and we saw it again and again with, with the same scenario where mm -hmm. people that had been taking photographs that were getting angry at other people the second they put their camera away they forgot about that internal anger as it were for their for their own scenario and unfortunately it all goes out the window so if you are there as a photographer in a space and that space and that view is important to you remember it's also important to others yeah so just please from a respect point of view treat other people with the same respect you'd want from them on that note on that note. <laughs> so this morning we've just come back actually from sunrise over it's one of the very famous barns um, mm -hmm. out here so edit to sunrise there and fun little, um, fun, fun one. Um, a guy had reserved a space. Uh, there <laughs> right we go. It's actually, it's actually in David's, um, David's mm -hmm. shop. So, you know, again, nobody owns the view. No one owns um, any property out there, apart from the people that actually own the property. Yeah. But what you ended up with um, was every single person that came to visit not able to get anywhere near this, this thing because... <laughs> The person that had placed that there had not just placed it there, but then disappeared off left for the next hour and a half mm -hmm. um, to sit and watch. Uh, kind of nice for mm -hmm. that person. So you've got one person's pleasure, uh, meaning 20, 25 people or whatever's pain. 
the fact is, and we've got to remember this as photographers, if you look at that group there, they're not there with tripods. They're not there with, with big cameras or whatever. They're yeah. genuinely there to watch the sunrise over something that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And we've just got to remember, it. It's a, again, it's a respect thing. You're a photographer, you're there to take an image. It may be that this is a massive trip that you've been saving up for for a long time or it's, it's something that you've, you've wanted to do forever. But you don't know that's not the same for everyone else that's there who may not be there to take photographs. They may just exactly. be there wanting to enjoy it. In fact, arguably, photographers can sometimes be the worst at enjoying a scene because yeah. yeah. we're there clicking buttons. So give people the same access that you mm. would want to those spaces. You cannot reserve areas of, of open land. You cannot be the person that once you're done puts everything away and gets in the way of everyone else's shot. It's it's just rude. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a reminder, and, it, and I have to remind myself sometimes. Um, you know, as much as you're getting angry at other people, I, I guarantee other people have gotten angry at you yep. for the same thing in <laughs> the past as well. So just just keep an eye out. So that was Oxbow Bend. Firstly, the the first uh, shot we showed. Then um, it's the Mormon Row um, Barnes. Second, yep. um, this is at the top of a place called Signal Mountain, um, which looks out over the Grand Teton Valley, um, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We've got some we've got some quiz stuff coming up in a minute um, for those <laughs> people that can try and work out what's photographically wrong with something. Um, on the way back, mm -hmm. kind of cool. Um, so a pure reflection across a lake with all of the Grand Teton range. Um, out in the background, so we've got some other shots from that. And we'll start off with, in fact, today's session, David can explain himself as to mm -hmm. what on earth you're what doing with I doing? that. <laughs> well, um, for that shot, actually, let's find, that was this shot. And you can see that, uh, if you can just see the metadata, metadata down at the bottom, it was four minutes, so it's quite a long shot, um, just to get this uh, movement in the clouds, of course. Um, but you can see by my lovely cleaning cloth that the camera was in direct sunlight from behind. And uh, for the first time ever, I'd got uh, a warning that the camera was not overheating, in fairness to it. It, was, it just said, camera is close to approaching recommended temperature. So then I stood there for and four minutes. And your coffee's ready. Yeah, yeah, quite. So I stood there for four, actually eight minutes because it's four minutes for the exposure yeah. um, and four minutes uh, for the black calibration. So if you haven't done any long exposures, and I'm sure it's camera dependent, but at least the two cameras I'm familiar with, uh, after doing a, an exposure over a certain amount of time, uh, the camera will then close off the shutter and do the same amount of exposure again not exposing the sensor to any light, but just actually measuring how the uh, sensor behaves for that length of time, because it will identify hot pixels or pixels that give too much and signal, pixels that don't give enough, and then that calibration is overlaid onto your actual shot. And if you've got your camera set to do that automatically, which most of them now out of the box are, yeah. what you'll find is in certain scenarios, it will kick in. So you, you may find that doing 30 seconds or less, it doesn't need it, because the camera yeah. works out that it's okay. If it's long, long time, basically the sensor gets really hot, mm -hmm. therefore you get hot pixels or more of them, so it needs to do the calibration. Equally, if the ambient temperature is really hot, you may only be doing a four second exposure. It's yeah, still yeah. gonna kick in because it knows that as those pixels warm up, you're gonna get the red, green, and blue hot pixels. Um, yeah. And it's, it's designed to save you time. There is a tool in Capture One that will help you with it in the details tab, which is the single pixel removal yeah, tool. This um, one over so here. that one on, on the screen at the moment. If you have an image which has got hot pixels in and your camera didn't do a black reference to, to get rid of them, this is fine. sliding that up to anything more than about two or three should start to see them disappear. Don't do it too much, especially on night shots, because it yeah. can get rid of stuff that you want. Um, but it, it's designed to look for pure red, pure green, pure blue pixels and, and remove them based on the size that you spec. Yeah. But the idea is you whether you do it in editing or whether you do it in the camera, you really don't want to see digital great big pixels. No, exactly. The only disadvantage of it, of course, is you know, in a, in a situation like this morning where, see that's four minutes as well. Four minutes uh, is quite a long time when it comes to the sun changing. And then yeah, that's- It gives you eight, one shot, basically. One shot, then you've got another four minutes while you sit there like, come on, come on, come on, yeah. while it's doing the black calibration before you can start another one. During four minutes you know, or eight minutes, a lot, a lot has changed. So, um, but yeah, the camera can get hot, so that's why I was standing there looking like an idiot holding a yellow towel over my uh, camera. But there we go. <laughs> right, images. 
Um, let's. Oh, do you want to look at the? Let's start with the, the you know, from the top of the, yeah the, the bit of a quiz one. So yeah. there's actually um, where's your wide shot? I can't see. Oh, it's uh, here. This one. Yeah. Um, have we not got the close shot? Yeah, it should have. Oh, where did the close shot go? Maybe I didn't flag it. Yeah. That was my mistake. Okay. Well, check um, I thought we had no. the close up. No, doesn't matter. Okay. So um, up top of uh, Signal Mountain, um, we've got a, a very very close shot. So we we're going to talk about specifically. <laughs> we can actually crop it on here. So yeah. this is the wide view. It's the wide vista that's, that looks out over the valley. David was shooting with a wide lens to try and get that whole view. I was shooting with a very different lens, um, which mm. has a very very different frame. And we you ended up going to something like trick it at the moment, that, but it's it? even closer than that. Yes. Yeah. So. The shot that I've got is on 138 mil lens, which is kind of to here, mm -hmm. and edited, and it's it's um, we've got the greens back and so on. But it's a very very different feel, and you wouldn't know actually where you were um, from that location. So it, it's just a, a broader one, which is when you get up to a big vista, it's very very tempting to go everything in, try and get the entire scene. You did quite a lot of moves. Yeah, <laughs> um, the whole thing in the frame. Mm -hmm. If you've got a long lens with you, sometimes just pull it out and see which little vignettes you can pick up uh, as you're looking around there, because it's not always about the big frame. Sometimes it's about the, um, the smaller details out yeah, in the exactly. distance. Where's the, uh, the so, quiz? Yeah, so at the time that that was taken, um, pointing my camera the other way, we get this one. So quiz, because you're all on live, and so you can comment on this. So this is 400th of a second. This so. is, yeah, this is yeah. pretty quick. So 400th of a second, and What's looking out to the mountain, we've got... Nice load of detail out on Grand Teton. Good question there, by the way, from Janelle. Go on then. Um, oh, yeah. So Janelle was asking, how do you properly calculate a long exposure metering? I've never done one, sadly. It's it's a little bit hit and miss, actually. So it's if not. It, well, it, well, it probably depends how good your camera meter is. So if I take... Easiest way is to do a single shot. Yeah. And then, so you get it metered correctly for a single shot. That may result in something like a thousandth of a second or something yeah, yeah. like that. You're then going to use an ND filter yeah. to get you to the desired amount of time. So if it's an ND 1000, for example, yeah. a thousandth of a second will get you to one second if you put it in there. Yeah. And that's, that's the math, basically. So if I want then, a, if I wanted to get to 30 seconds, then I'm going to have to put two NDs on there to stack it. So an ND 1000 plus um, something like an ND 8 or whatever mm -hmm. um, to do it. But you get to you you will get in your head an idea of what filters i need to get up to the time what i wouldn't recommend is starting with a filter clicking you could be waiting three or four minutes yeah. looking afterwards and going oh no it's too dark yeah. it was too heavy a filter or it wasn't <laughs> enough filter and it's blown out yeah, yeah so true, start true. with a clear no filter game from there work out what time you want to do so and that's going to base on how much cloud movement there is, how much water movement there is, how much wind do you think the camera can put up with, all yeah. of those elements. So if you think mm, 20 seconds is enough movement for me or 10 minutes or mm -hmm. whatever, based on that amount of time, you then load in an ND filter yeah. to work that out. If you've got something like mine, so a phase one camera, mm -hmm. I don't have to do that because I can use frame averaging, so Which, I can specify forever. Hence then this comment here it. from Ash Farm. Where did the comment go? Oh, oh yeah, surprising new frame averaging. We did. Yeah. <laughs> so. Sorry, um, you guys can't see the. It's. I can. You can. Ash Farmer, yeah. No, look up on the screen. Oh, you can't. Still, that's see strange. the text. It's black. Weird. Weird. Okay. Um, uh, but Ash was saying, yeah. So frame we averaging, we'll talk about in a, in a second. Um, but Prasad also mentioned there's a, a couple of apps as well, which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, to calculate. Um, but there's also the danger, of course, as you know, a long exposure, like four minutes, the light was changing quite a bit. So a couple of times this week, yeah. I've actually overexposed uh, because I've figured out, you know, roughly what it would be, done the exposure, and then it's too long. So for me, at least, there's a little bit of, of hit and miss in it. As well. And risks of long exposure, obviously, are things yeah. blur. Um, and the longer your lens, in theory, the yeah. longer the, or the bigger the risk you've got of tiny little movements blurring things. So, mm -hmm. we have an image on the left, which is a 400th of a second, an yeah. image on the right, which in theory is a 400th of a second, but we actually use frame averaging, which we won't go into the detail of specifically, but it was about a two and a half minutes worth of exposure. Mm -hmm. So what's wrong with the image on the right? What happened to the image on the right? We'll come back to it in a minute. Yeah. Um, so but there is a difference um, <laughs> between those two, quite yeah. obviously. 
what happened to the image on the right? And it's not camera shake. And it's not camera shake. <laughs> I'm not that clumsy. Yeah, so engineer that one out. It's not camera yeah, shake. Exactly the same settings, exactly the same. It's um, not out distance. of focus. Not out of no, focus. No but focus something changed. Wrong. Something changed. Yeah. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Come back to that. Think about that amongst yourselves. Um, yeah, and to just to, to show these have been edited a little bit, but I haven't messed around with white balance in particular. But that was before the sun popped up over the hills behind us. Then that's when it was starting to sneak up, and then that's when it fully came out. And this one's faked a little bit as well. <laughs> and to David's point, imagine you'd started a long exposure. Oops, sorry, here. Yeah. <laughs> so you've metered, I think it was Danielle's question, or, but um, you've metered for this. You set your camera with the right ND filters to need, and this is the difference, you mm -hmm. need now that four minutes of light yeah. in order to break through that ND. And then all of a sudden the sun does that. Yeah. Now you're going to end up with huge blown out areas because the calculation you made, the ND filter that's on there, is wrong mm -hmm. for the new amount of light that's happening during that exposure. That's where frame averaging comes in, because mm -hmm. it, it comes into its own, because we can avoid that scenario. But when it comes to traditional long exposures, please, please, especially at sunrise and sunset, don't just click the button and think, yeah, we're good. If that light changes dramatically during your exposure, consider stopping, stopping it, yeah. recalculating and restarting. Otherwise, you're wasting that four minutes to eight minutes, eight minutes yeah, exactly. of something that you know isn't going to work. Yes, it's so quite keep an eye on the light. I think Olympus actually, I don't correct yeah, they me, build it they have a screen. nice uh, long exposure visualization so you can actually see the image. It's pretty cool materializing on the uh, yeah. um, screen itself. So it's pity more manufacturers don't do that. What did you want to mention there? Um, nothing will show Solomon that stuff in okay. a bit. Cool. All right. Is it nearly Solomon time? Um, it may be. So we will go back to that mountain thing quickly. Because um, Ash has actually put up a, a, good, a good answer, but it's not good the right answer. answer. Um, so Ash's answer being, you're in an earthquake zone. Yes, we yeah. are. Um, and there are constant vibrations from Yellowstone. Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. This actually isn't it. And it's something that I hadn't really... I knew we've, we've had it before. It's, mm. it's happened. I've factored it in before, but I wasn't here. Um, I've actually got a video at the back of the camera screen on, in live view. This is heat haze. So what you actually see in the live view on the camera when you look through on a long lens specifically is the constant waves shimmering, of, shimmering yeah. of, of heat coming up. Um, yesterday it got pretty hot, in fairness. Yeah. Um, because the foreground's the fine, isn't it? Oh no, it's, no, there's a little bit there as well. It's yeah, haze. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's just heat. And, and you can yeah. literally see it through the camera as you're there. So you're worrying about moving the camera. You're mm -hmm. worrying about the subject moving. You're worrying about wind. You're worrying about anything like that. There are sometimes scenarios like this where it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter if, it, if there was no wind, actually, this, this day. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter any of that. Keep an eye on any external factor. And, and for example, if I hadn't reviewed those pictures, I would have happily carried on with three minutes, four minutes, yeah. another three minutes, all okay. And then you get home, it's look not, at it. And, not usable, ooh, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing, again, that, that I'll teach people quite often is when you're doing a long exposure, Take a single quick exposure at the start and a single quick exposure at the end. Mm -hmm. Do your long exposure in the middle. The reason, if something went wrong with that long exposure, you've got two, frankly, safety shots. You've still got the scene, just not with the movement that you wanted, but you've got, you're going to come away with something if that long exposure went wrong, especially if you've only got a short window at sunrise yeah. and sunset. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Fantastic. Uh, any questions did we uh, miss? Jim wants to know if we're going to shoot the Milky Way. It oh, yeah. depends. We're struggling on sleep at the moment already, <laughs> but yeah. potentially. Um, yeah. Later on, we're meeting up with Brian, so we may, we may talk about that. Okay, cool. Uh, and Scott was saying, any recommend recommendations on ND filter brands you like? So many to choose so, from now, really. Yeah, generally speaking, so there, there's two general types so you've got resin based ones and you've got glass based ones mm -hmm. um, the answer i give people is how do you prefer to damage your filters do you prefer to scratch them or just prefer to smash them smash them because <laughs> um, that's the difference pretty yeah, much yeah. now optically with them resin uh, filters now the, the modern ones are optically fantastic so are the mm -hmm. glass ones um, you want to look for a filter that results in as close to zero color cast as possible. There is no such thing as zero color cast. If a filter manufacturer says to you their filter has no color cast whatsoever, they're lying. 
every substance that light passes through affects that light in some way, shape or form, yeah. even clear diamonds. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the same scenario. So what you're looking for is the minimal. It doesn't mean the filter's bad, but you want it to reduce the amount of color cast. And what we mean by that is if you take a shot without the filter and you take a shot with the filter, does the white balance and tint shift mm. from the same um, level of white and gray? And you can test that in Capture One. You can yeah. actually, you can use Capture One to do it. You'd use the picker, take a picture with the filter, pick, picture without the filter, pick the same spot. And if it's shifted, that's, that's your color cast effectively yeah. that's happening. Better filters have a very small shift. Um, some, some brands, you know, Lee is known to have a greeny blue shift. Kokin mm -hmm. was always known to have a slightly pink shift. Um, but there are people out there, and you, you've got Polar Pro are now in the filter market. You've got Format High Tech, you've got, oh, crikey, B plus W, um, Lee are out there, obviously, Nissi are out there. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, there, there's the Kokin, we've already mentioned them, but there are loads of brands out there. Genuinely, my, my suggestion would be, if you've got a camera shop near to you, go to them, have a look at the actual filters themselves, Try ask them if you can do just two test shots, one with and one without, yeah. and find the one. And also that's how you. how the filter system handles as well. Yeah, like the is holder it, is it is the holder is the holder fiddly to get on and off the lens? Uh, is it hard to get the filters in and out of the uh, um, filter holder? All that kind of handling stuff, I think, is pretty yeah. pretty important as as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. A couple of things on comments quickly. Mm. So. Ash just said, yeah, Polar Pro ND is excellent. It, it is. Um, I've, oh, Earth is the other one. So Earth, I've got a lot yep. of Earth ones that are, they used to be called something else. Globe, Globus the one. or Globe something. Yep. Um, they're now called Earth. They're, they make really, Earth really nice um, yeah. screw-in filters. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the brands, it, it's less about the brand and more about the one that works for you and the system, as David says. Yeah. Um, Ash has said, can we do a black and white conversion? We may be able to. If not today, it'll be next time, but we can yeah. on one of the long exposures. Mm -hmm. um, Tim, camera IBIS making it soft. No, it's not in this case because the phase one doesn't have camera oh, IBIS. Yeah. However, <laughs> good point. Could be. If you're on a tripod yeah. and you're doing long exposures, turn off your stabilizer in yeah. your camera. Do not have stabilization on. If you do that, the camera is fighting with anything that happens and comes through the tripod. Yeah. So you're trying to lock down any movement and the stabilizer itself will create movement yeah. if you're not careful. Some cameras have got a sensor on them now. Right. Will actually sense if you're locked in and need the stabilizer, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Generally speaking, no. Yeah, I can only on the Fuji X-H2. You know, you can only really see the ibis kicking when you if you rotate the camera a little bit. You can just see the yeah move a little bit, but it's it's been fine on. But my older Sony, I always had to turn it off. Otherwise, it would be yeah fighting against it for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave the comments of people telling you what filters they're using. So you, yeah, you, you enjoy that one. There's a whole. The, the problem is that's the thing. Everyone has yeah. a different preference, and it's going to come down to the the system and the filters that you like the most. Yeah, definitely. Nice one. Right. Wow. And now for something completely different. Now for something completely different. We are going to find our special guest, Solomon. So let's hope he remembers to unmute himself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Solomon. David. How are you doing? Paul? Yes, thanks I'm for joining well, us. Thank you. Um, no, so thank you for having me. This is uh, Solomon from Smith & Co Galleries, uh, and it would probably make sense for contents, context, rather, just to let everyone else know what your company does, what you get involved in, what your relationship with Paul is. Then and why so I know you. Why, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely yes. uh, friendship, you can tell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Smith & Co Galleries, we, we are, um, uh, we work on behalf of interior designers and hospitality clients um, providing artwork for projects. So right. um, high-end residential interior design, if somebody wants uh, to finish their project with nice artwork, then we're a B2B um, that works with that interior design company uh, to kind of broker artwork between either artists or photographers to finish that project. Nice one. So yeah. earlier today, um, we shared... A capture on live link with Solomon, which you uh, should have up on your screen, I think. And if you're not yep. sure what capture, capture on live is uh, for, for you listening, Capture on Live allows you to share a collection of photos within Capture One uh, to anyone anywhere in the world who can access it on any web browser. So whether that's on 
I mean, Solomon's on a laptop, yeah. but that could be a phone, it could be an iPad, it could be an Android device, it could be anything that has access to the internet. And then you can see here our collection of uh, pictures. I was going to say, just to explain, so up there, up there is David's screen right here, screen. which is in yep. Wyoming right now. Yep. Over th there, there is Solomon's screen in London right yep. now. Um, so he has control of that. They're linked via Capture One's cloud service. So, for example, if on, have we got one of the yeah. barns, this one here, which has a green flag on it at the moment, mm -hmm. if we were to change it here and say we're going to change that color tag to yellow, it changes on Solomon's screen to yellow as well. That's right. um, yep. So Solomon can rate, he can comment, he can color flag, and mm. we can have <coughs> conversations about stuff, and he can see any edits as we're doing them. Yeah. The, the link with Solomon, as it were, um, for, for this is I shoot content that Solomon places into hospitality clients. So quite often, it's all well and good if I come back and say, here goes Solomon, here's everything we shot. But yeah. actually, sometimes it's useful halfway through a, a trip or a shoot to work out, are we on the right track or are we mm -hmm. off? Because otherwise, um, you can come back with nothing useful. A wasted journey. So yeah. this is a way of doing well, it. Well, I'm, I'm in the market, Paul. I'm in the market. I've got a project <laughs> here. Uh, yeah. And I'd, uh, yeah, I'd like to have a look through and see if you've got anything for me. Did you want to hear about the project first? Yeah, for it. definitely. Okay. Um, so it's an East Coast interior designer, um, but the client that they're working with, this is a residential project. Um, the, the client that they're working with has got an infinity for the American West. So I thought, brilliant timing. This would be a good one to bring to you. Um, you'll notice uh, a lot of kind of natural textures in there, a lot of woods as well. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I'm getting excited by what I'm seeing um, so far. I think we could probably find something. I think it could probably do with using some warmer tones as well. I think the mm. feeling is from the designer that a lot of the tones that they're using in this project are warm. So we're going for high texture, warm tones. Um, and no blue skies. So <laughs> yeah. Blue skies are allowed. Blue skies are allowed. Um, okay. So, I mean, we would say that's handy, but we obviously knew that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, just for everyone else's this benefit. Um, so, there, there is a scenario here which is Solomon could be blind, as in I can send this link and it's a, it's a review to us, so it doesn't yeah. have to be synchronous, we don't, we don't it doesn't have, have to be online. Be online um, so with time zones and whatever, it, it could be late at night, um, Solomon goes through and, and, and stars and stuff, and we come back. Some of these have been edited, some haven't. Um, I can recommend things, Solomon could put comments against those, those images as well. Um, but if we're looking for the wood stuff, it's probably the later stuff that we shot today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like these. So, so can, I, can I go through and have a look? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. So by clicking in live, you get the full screen preview, mm -hmm. just like that. Great. Um, and that one, in the same way Ooh. this morning, so David touched on, there is an issue with the fact that the sun was changing very rapidly this morning. So you've got very different light conditions between mm -hmm. different frames um, from time to time. Um, like that. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I like the cloud movement in 517CO. Uh, um, is there a way that we could get uh, the color, f one, the color of the one. sky from 70CO, but with the movement of the clouds in 71? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yes, so luckily, because it's been edited, we've got layers. Um, so if we want, uh, let me just pull up this one here. Should we make a, make your screen a little bit bigger for now? If you want, just switch um, that. let's just turn off Solomon's Live and we'll just go through a quick edit. Quick edit. Here. So, yeah, we have, a, we have a difference. Part of that is white balance in the camera as well, which doesn't Ooh, particularly let's get help. Rid of, uh, There's a big me behind the screen. <laughs> Um, Let's get rid of giant. Look pool. at that! Look at those bags. That's lack of sleep. <laughs> um, there we go. We we'll take that off. Right. <laughs> just, actually, just for reference, just a fun one. The hotel we're in, we booked a two-bedroom room. Mm -hmm. To me, a bedroom is something with probably four walls and a door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have no doors in this room. <laughs> Think it's about free, that. It's free flowing. Yeah. Um, so, 
So, uh, to match these across, let me just get my cursor back onto here. Uh, we need to probably on that sky layer tone down a little bit, not too much, probably about to there. Um, that's probably okay there. And then maybe in our and background. We'll, we'll bring up Solomon's view again once Paul's edited because also the edits happen in real time as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, any, any changes which happen to. Uh, so if we um, want this to... Capture One is reflected in Capture One Live straight away. So I'm just going to remove... We, we pulled down the, the exposure just to keep the, the snow and stuff from being too peaky. But actually, yeah. if it's not and it's okay, yeah, then we're good. Um, we can probably pull the sky down a little bit more, just a touch more. Maybe to there. Um, they're never going to completely match, and that's one thing. So as light changes between different mm -hmm. shots, you are going to have different elements that, that don't quite match. But um, in, in theory, that now pops more. There is one other problem with this shot. Um, just looking at it, I'm just going to go into this one, um, and I, I want to show what we did actually on the previous skew, which is if we look at here, um, let's just get just that one selected. Let's uh, bring up you bigger so as well. Um, so, if you look at this barn, the, the barn is leaning. It, it's a fact. It's it's literally a leaning barn. So there's no there's nothing wrong with this shot. The shot is mm -hmm. actually level. It was spirit leveled at the time. The ground is there, but we've got this slight slant on the on the barn. It's, it's sort of skewed across, and the, the key is in that word skew. Yeah. New in when did Auto Keystone come Ooh, in? Oh, that would have been sixty. Uh, no, fifteen. So capture on twenty two. Late in the day of twenty. One or two versions. Yeah. Of current current version and the one before. Yeah. Um, we've got the new Auto Keystone. We're not going to use that today. But as a result of Auto Keystone, you've got this new slider called Skew, which no one really uses. <laughs> so we've got Rotate. We know that that everyone knows how to rotate an image. That's fine. Yeah. We've got Vertical and Horizontal Keystone, which we've been using for a long time. Aspect makes things thinner or, or fatter, depending on um, which way you go. Skew is different. Skew basically shifts things. It's like a parallelogram. Yeah, like making a parallelogram, rhombus or whatever. Yeah. So in the case here, I do not want to rotate because if I rotate the barn to make it look like it's more upright, let's just do that. Let's go across sort of there. Yeah. Now the whole ground is leaning. So the barn is now straight up, but the ground is leaning. That doesn't make sense. So instead, what we need to do is use the skew tool to shift a tiny bit so you can see the shape on the screen is actually now shifted. And that gives us more uprights in the barn. We still do have a slight rotation issue. So I'm just going to, uh, sorry, wrong way, oh, to about there. We could actually do it with the, um, the rotation tool across here, just to keep that level horizon correct. But what we've done as a result is straight, or give the impression of straightening the barn. Mm -hmm. So the barn being something that's skewed, the right tool to use is skew. It's not a rotate, it's not a keystone, it's actually that skew amount. Yeah. Small amounts make a big difference. Don't overdo it with skew. Yeah. Um, and of course, instant update for Solomon as well. So Yeah, so yeah. he sees what we've done on there. But that wasn't the yeah, shot that, that he great. wanted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what you want is a completely shot. different shot. Sorry, yeah. but we'd already, I'd actually done that previously on the other shot, that's why we shot it here, yeah. I showed it here. So. I would agree, that's a nicer shot with the sun falling on the barn, all yeah. cool. So, we're gonna do something quite cool now. Hopefully. Um, hopefully quite cool. We, I'm gonna disappear for two seconds, a bit longer than that. <laughs> Baby's gonna keep you entertained. Um, yes. And actually, Scott's got a question for Solomon, so that'll keep, that'll, that, that'll, that'll keep, stop you having to keep them entertained. That'll keep good. us busy. I'm yeah. gonna go and press some buttons and try and make something work. Right, cool. nice one. So a question from Scott Solomon said, how sure. can one become a collaborator with your studio? Uh, with, with my company personally or with... Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so I mean, um, first and foremost, having an accessible portfolio of work um, mm -hmm. for us to review is, is important. Um, and that can be as simple as a Google Drive with low res in for, for me to have a look at. Yeah. Um, or a, a fully fledged kind of PDF with a bit about you. I think this game is all about, um, or certainly the way that Smith & Co pitches it is all on authenticity. So mm -hmm. um, 
nine times out of 10, if somebody takes their wallet out to buy a piece of photography, it's because that they've got a connection to the place or the photographer. So I'd right. say that the bio, the bio of the photographer is as important as the work itself. Um, people want to know that you, you know, uh, that you enjoy taking pictures, you love taking pictures. And uh, if you live and breathe it, I think that that shows uh, in, in, in the portfolio as well. So yeah, um, sell yourself, really. Um, I, I'd be delighted to receive portfolios if anyone wants to get in contact with me after this. Um, photography 200 emails and coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. But look, it's, <laughs> and, and we because we operate across, well, globally, um, mm -hmm. I cannot predict one week or the next what we're going to be asked for. So right. I've got clients in Florida um, who have just uh, who are made, building a clubhouse at the moment. They're going to need artwork throughout, um, and uh, they want images of swamps. Now, it isn't something that you'd particularly <laughs> think. I'm going to go out and shoot swamps today. Swamps, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but if you've got it, you know, yeah. uh, it, it, it's really difficult to predict what's going to be asked for. So even mm -hmm. if you don't think that the photography is necessarily that commercial, um, you might be surprised one day. Nice one. And but you're based in the UK, as uh, I can't remember if we mentioned that at the start, but but the clients you're selling into, as you said, they can be based anywhere, right? And also photographers that you work with, they're also based anywhere as well, I assume. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we, we, we're, we're not fussed where you're from. Um, we operate, yeah, like I say, globally. I'm UK based. Um, a lot of the hospitality uh, companies are headquartered in the US. So it's just kind of um, where, where I happen to be a lot of the time. Uh, meeting with my clients and and yeah like I say like um it, it, we follow where the building is typically because that's where the big clubhouses are going up the new hotels are going up so um, right. and the renovations so that's kind of uh the vein of work that we that we get into I like Holland's comment one man's swamp is another's preserve <laughs> so true yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely so You've worked some AI magic. We're done. Yeah. Um, just as a side note, my yeah. Vic back at home got yes. the answer right for the heat haze. Oh, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Gold star. Um, um, just, just on that, just on that, Paul, how close were you to the back of David's camera during that exposure? That could be the heat haze. It could have been coming off. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> the back Fair of point, David's quite camera. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> He's actually raised the temperature yeah. in the National Park by that one is, degree today. You no, know, in that same, that same spot, your camera was also getting It, it was. I actually Toasty. burnt my finger on the back of my yeah. digital back so you know what you've got to remember the camera manufacturers have a really hard time with this mm. we want our cameras to be silent so that means yeah. no fans small we also yeah. want them to be weatherproof and waterproof so that means yeah. no holes so you've got something that is silent with yeah. no fan with sealed generating heat mm -hmm. in 90 degree heat outside yeah it's going to get hot. It's going to get um, it's going to have problems, and that's that's why the manufacturers invented the the whole dark curtain process. Dark, yeah, the, the black to calibration it. process. Because in the early days, showing my age of when we were involved with digital backs from I don't know like other companies like Leaf, Cenar uh, to think of an old name. Quite often, uh, Imacon, who I used to work for, there was a big cooling fan embedded inside the camera back, which is great. But then that introduces dust, water. You know, all that. All it's that not great in weddings stuff. either. Not great in weddings having a, a fan, you know, whirring away. Um, but that Fuji X-H2 actually has uh, two screw mounts and a power port for a, a fan and a heat sink. Right. So if you're using using it for video where you've got a lot of sensor throughput, then you can bolt yep. this thing on. If right we're um, if, if we're talking thermal qualities as well, and it's just mm. funny that ND filters came up. When I was shooting in Iceland with Paul once, my ND filters seized together in the cold. Um, yeah, right. no, they, they can, well, the one that gets most people, the screw, the yeah. So what happens is you, you put your, your ND filter on in the warm, you tighten it up nicely mm -hmm. to get it in there, then you take it out into the cold and the different metals react at different speeds and effectively the, the, your camera just goes around your filter. Yeah. And that thread has now shrunk, now, lots of things shrink in the cold, <laughs> and as you, as you try and remove it, it just doesn't work. It, yeah. you, you actually have to either brutally go for it or mm -hmm. the trick is take it somewhere warm and then yeah. remove the filter later on otherwise you're probably going to do some damage to either the filter at best or your camera at, at worst exactly right so what i was doing very quickly so as part of my website uh when we're selling prints um, we have an ar function so an augmented reality function on there 
This is the bit that could go very wrong, very wrong, <laughs> but we'll we'll hope that it, it works. So, so you've sent Solomon a I've link. I've sent here. Solomon a link um, to oh. the picture that he chose, chose mm -hmm. with the edit we've just done. And that link means that you can click on it and the, it's a phone app, so it'll work if you have iOS, it works yep, if you so have Android. One. And you will click across your wall, sorry, scan, or scan across your wall, and it's going to put that picture onto your wall in real size, real time, if we get it on there. <laughs> and then once you've done that, you can walk around, you can make it bigger, make it smaller, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Um, there we there go. We go. Wow. So it's fixed on the wall. Wow, look at this. Yeah. And oh. he's hidden it behind the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> Made it a bit too small. <laughs> so we've got it up on Solomon's phone. In terms of the steps, we go to the page. You click on the link on a phone. It won't work on a desktop computer because it needs yep. the camera integration. So an iOS or an Android device, you're going to click on the link. That link will present you with a camera function. The camera will tell you, well, it won't tell you, but it's expecting you to scan around the wall that you're gonna put that picture on. And that picture can then be walked around, you can walk into, you can look at the detail in it, mm -hmm. you can come back. So you'll be able to see at home the detail in the shot that we've just done. Sure, put this up. So we're gonna put it up and it's probably gonna crash your website. Yeah, so, so it might crash your website. Yeah. So if you try with your phone to scan that, QR code that will take you to a web page, and then the link says it says oh, click here basically. Click here. Um, yeah. So there's a little red outlined box that says view in AR or something like yeah. that, um, or view in your room. If you click on that little link, uh, that will load up the AR function on your camera within your phone, as long as your phone was made since 1984 <laughs> um, or, or around that time. That should then allow you to be able to see that print or yeah. that image on that wall. So. If we look at the workflow that we're actually sort of describing here, this goes from us being out in the field shooting, we can review on iPhone, iPad, we talked yep. about that on the last live mm -hmm. that we were doing. Take that back to an edit, back at base for yep. us. We can share that link live via Capture One Live. Could have done that from the iPad as well, but yep. from there or mm -hmm. from this, to someone in another continent, literally, he's, he's over in London at the moment, we can do the edits, we can play with it, we can, we can update, and then what happens after that is up to me to a certain extent, but I can take that and we can actually allow Solomon to show clients or, or even him um, what it's going to look like when it's on the wall at different sizes. Yeah, so have a go at that yourself and let us yeah. know actually in the chat if you uh, succeeded as well. If you're watching a recording, you can still... We'll leave it up until the end of next month. So okay, there we go. So end got, of August. End of August. You've 2023. Got a, you've got a couple of uh, <laughs> a couple of months to actually uh, try it out as well. So so that link will still be valid on on that little microsite page. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty cool because I've I, I've tried it a little bit in the past, but I hadn't didn't realise the extent that you could walk up to the picture on the wall and see the detail and everything else as you well, behind which is it. It's pretty cool. Look yeah. behind it. You can yep. see how it's made. Because I guess if the frame is different, you can yep. see the frame material. Yeah, you can see the wood construction. How that sits in the room and everything. It's it's pretty good. Oh, Alan got it to work. Nice. There we go. Cool. Fantastic. So I think that from a, from a commercial stance as well, uh, being able to send this to a client and being able to join them dots up before the piece arrives is huge. Yeah. Um, and well, the, level actually, detail, Solomon, the level of detail is astonishing as well. Well, that's, um, that's a low-res one as well, because that's a quick low-res um, <laughs> from, the, from the back well, end, as it were. Um, yeah. So the, the, the key thing is, is actually what Solomon touched on before, which is Solomon's based in London, mm -hmm. but equally you could be traveling, and more importantly, your clients basically aren't. So your clients could be Japan, Australia, US, wherever, the ability to get trust with a client early on comes from them being able to visualize things. Yeah. And especially with designers, they, they are visual people, otherwise mm -hmm. they wouldn't be a designer. They shouldn't be. So, <laughs> so if you can get them to a space where they're comfortable, that they know what's coming, they, they like the tones, they like the image, they like the composition, whatever, and they can see it in situ, that's an easy sell. Yeah. Compared to blind, trust me, here's a JPEG that we've sent you on your email. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think it's just, it, it takes so much out of, if I had to send samples out, physical samples for review as well. Um, the mm -hmm. physical samples are never going to be as big as the one that they want to purchase in the end anyway, if it's a larger installation. So having something that is true to size as well, scale makes up such a huge part of choosing artwork for a project. So being able to visualize that and actually being able to make it bigger and smaller in live time and adjust that scale for a project is really okay. important. 
Yeah, I guess sending them a, a sample 10-8 print and then them sticking it in a it hotel lobby, work. it just, it just and, doesn't work. And if you think yeah. about it, what, what photographers, and we do, so what photographers mm. generally do is we'll send either a small version of it or we'll send a crop at 100%. Well, the crop yeah. gives you an idea of detail and tone, mm -hmm. but you can't visualise the rest of that on the wall. No. The small one doesn't let you visualise the whole thing. And, and actually, there is a scenario where, if, if I'm brutal about it, we sell prints into British homes that are typically quite small. People yeah. tend to order a print that's too big for their wall. Mm -hmm. Sell that same print into an American home, which yeah. tends to have slightly bigger walls, <laughs> yeah. and it looks a bit lost. So there is something about trying to gauge, if you haven't done it before, what size works for a room. Yeah. And now you it's true. It. If you think you go and buy a new TV and you're standing in the showroom, which is enormous, think, wow, 55 inches, that's going to fit in my room. And then you bring it home. And it, then will. You've got, it, it will. It will fit. And you've got this, you know, gargantuan whatever in, in a space that doesn't work. So the... Well, I think as a, as, a, as a rule of thumb, the new homes in Texas and Florida that are being built are 12 foot ceilings. So you, you're right. absolutely right. It's, it, it needs some big in portrait. Well, yeah. yeah, there's and a I, lot of designers saying I've got a lot of walls, a lot of wall space. And I can stand up at home and touch my ceiling, pretty much. That's, how, <laughs> that's the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and he's short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, for the guys that are online now, um, you're seeing that. Obviously, if you're not online and you're watching this later on, we are not yeah. a support department for the AR function of your phone, unfortunately. unfortunately so, yeah. if it didn't work, sorry about that, but it did for others. So, well done, those that did. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a workflow that we wanted to show you today, and it, especially when we're talking about remote working and we are sort of in, at times away from any signal, it seems, from any network provider. Um, if we can get as much information back to base, as it were, as mm -hmm. quickly as possible, it just helps that flow, especially when we're talking about commercial stuff, to happen quicker, easier, and, and with less, less risk, as yeah. it were. Yeah, absolutely. So that, if you think about that entire flow, that is, go shoot with a camera, you can use Capture One at that point as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can use it on iPhone or iPad. Take that into iPad or desktop, either way. You can do some edits, you can do some ratings. Share that through Capture One Live out mm -hmm. to whoever you want. You can password protect um, the yeah, live sessions can. and so yeah. on, so you could send it to, to people that are confidential. That person, as you saw on the screen, so if you pull up Solomon's screen again, Solomon, oh, if you go back to your um, thumbnail view thingy, um, so as you saw earlier, everything that we're doing mm -hmm. is happening real time on the Solomon screen. And likewise, if Solomon makes a star choice or a color choice or whatever, that happens real time on ours. Yeah, actually Solomon, you see up in the top right hand corner, there's a little pair of binoculars on that yep. screen. So if you click those, if I was to just open up, let's uh, say bring this shot and then I make a change. Uh, Ash mentioned black and white earlier. So if I was to uh, just turn on the black and white for a second, then and we just adjust or whatever, then what you'll see is that immediately on Solomon's end, it's now black and white. So if we're having a conversation, well, what do you think works better for this? Is the client going to want the color version or are they going to want the black and white version? You know, what, I'm, what sits I'm, better, so. I'm a sucker for black and white, it has to be said, although. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. The, you know, and I think I'm guilty, you know, on Capture On Live of, of forgetting to, to really tell people as much about it as possible because you know, it's ingrained in me now, but a couple of important points to remember is that we're not sending entire raw data and entire raw images to our cloud server. Yeah. It's a smaller file, but it's accurate in terms of color, contrast, quality, all that kind of stuff. As you saw, Solomon can zoom in a little bit well, as, as well. I was going to so. say, on, on the one that we edited there for him to use, that's a 151 megapixel image. Um, yeah. So in terms of data that it's sending, the raw is about 200 meg. Yeah. plus the adjustments and whatever. We're not giving him that level of, of detail. We're giving him the detail that he no. needs to see over the web. Exactly. Um, and of course, if, if we were sending 150 megapixels each time we made a small adjustment, you know, it would, it would, take, uh, it would take forever. Um, ev all of you have got access to Capture On Live. You can see this little share online dude up in the top left-hand corner. Let's just bring up my screen a bit bigger. Uh, so we want to have... This one, oh no, sorry, I got rid of Paul Solomon then for a second. Um, so uh, all of you have got access to this up here, share online. Um, 
the free version that everyone has access to. Each of the sessions will work for 24 hours. You can add an additional add-on subscription to Capture On Live, uh, and then you can run the, the link to last for a month as well. And there's a few other additional things that you can do as well. But you see, I've got a few active online questions and there's uh, the, the one, sorry, sessions, not questions, a few active online sessions. There's the one that we sent to Solomon. You can restrict access. You can add multiple people for access as well. It's a, it's a really great system if you've got a, a team to collaborate yep. with. Yeah. Nice. So, um, other than people confirming that AR works, works um, excellent, so, yay! Um, we're into new worlds. <laughs> yeah. um, that's pretty much it for today. If there are questions, yeah. then put them in now, and we'll try and cover them. If there are questions for Solomon, we can cover those as well, um, yeah, or he exactly. can. Um, more importantly, um, there is a little fun one. So, next live is on. Let's just put these up, July nineteenth. Solomon is still here, by yeah, the way. Don't, just, don't run off Solomon. So, if there is a question, uh, yeah, we'll come cool. back. <laughs> Um, so next live is on next Wednesday, 19th? The 19th, today is the 15th. Uh, so, so yeah, next Wednesday. Next um, Wednesday, yeah. During that live, we're going to have a competition. Yeah. Um, so there will be a quiz and a random answer of something that cannot be found on Google, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, and the person that gets it the most right, let's go with that. Yeah, yeah, closest to the answer. Um, yeah. Will get shipped one of the prints that we have taken from out here. Not one that Solomon sells, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one that, that should be cool. Um, and yeah, if you're lucky, David won't sign it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> if you're even luckier, I won't. Yeah. Then it might be worth something. It'd be cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so next Wednesday. Yeah, um, it's on YouTube again. It's slightly earlier. It's one hour earlier than, I mean, obviously it depends where you are in the world. But um, if you've watched the last couple at the same time, this one's going to be an hour earlier. But if you scan that QR code, that will take you to a page on our support site where you can also hit an add to calendar link. And that will give you, a, uh, give you a reminder to go and watch it as well. Or if you subscribe to Capturon's YouTube channel, then you'll also get a notification when we go live too. So that also uh, makes sense to be able to do that. Uh, so either scan the QR code, uh, visit YouTube or visit support.capture1.com and the live stream section and uh, you'll find it all there as well. So um, There's one question from Ash. Uh, does mm -hmm. stitching panels in Capture One skew the image? Um, so oh, it doesn't skew it, as, right. as in, in the, I think, in the sense that you mean. Um, however, what it will do, depending on the projection that you've chosen, you will, uh, Ash's reference that um, the moon wasn't round anymore. Right. Um, so it will stretch and, and pull to try and align um, those, different, uh, those different frames. If you yeah. want to avoid that, you kind of need to be in a place where um, you're, you're shooting either with moving the sensor, so mm -hmm. a technical camera, so it, it's staying on the same plane the whole time, or you're in an unfortunate place where you're going to have to find a rail or something like that to avoid it. The second you start turning the camera, mm -hmm. there's a risk that it's going to start putting in those round bowls and start to, to stretch and, and move. Yeah. You can and should really be um, shooting around the nodal point of your lens rather than the camera. That will have a big impact on it. So if you haven't looked at it, look for nodal rails. Um, there's a lot of information online um, mm -hmm. about them. But if you, if you use a nodal rail, so in other words, you're shifting your camera back so the, the point that it turns on your tripod is no longer the sensor, it's now the lens's nodal point, it means that you're looking around from the same position rather than turning uh, right. that lens. That means that when Capture One goes to stitch it, it's going to do it more cleanly and it doesn't, basically it doesn't have to manipulate it as much because it doesn't need that level of manipulation. Mm -hmm. The second you're doing it kind of trying to do it quickly or, or trying to do it without any of the, the extra kit, Capture One does it very well. It does a good, a good job, but it's bear in mind it's having to manipulate things to make it fit and squeeze. Yeah, and Ash, if you probably go back to the launch of Capture One Twenty Two, there's a live stream with Paul, which I think oh, is yeah. all Lovely. around nodal rails and everything. So, yeah. so have a look. Um, Tim just said the yeah, AR worked eventually when I stopped trying to point it at a dark wall. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So um, the way that AR works, it uses the ambient light around, so it's not going to illuminate that print or print or image. It's going to give you whatever you see. So if it's a completely dark wall, yeah, the picture may be there. It's just not going to see it because it's dark. No, exactly. Um, cool. Nice one. I think Solomon's still there. Oh, if I. Pick the right scene. There we go. He is still there. He is. So thanks for joining us today, Solomon. Um, I know hey, thank you for having me. Later in the day 
um, <laughs> for you than it is here. So yeah, thanks for doing that and um, and uh, talking about the business and and how this kind of stuff is really important as well. So appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, All right. no, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> nice one. All right. Well, thanks for joining us again today. Yeah, do come back on July the uh, 19th as we yep. said, um, and we look forward to seeing you there. And um, we'll do Ash's black and white conversion. Yeah, we do, we do a black and white conversion. We'll probably do this one. Yeah, okay. there is a, a black and white live stream coming up in August as well, I think. Um, around the end of August, I'm gonna do one specifically on black and white, so, so tune in for that as well. But thanks for joining us, Solomon, and everyone else, and take care. We'll see you all soon. Bye now. Bye. See, see you later. Good luck, lads. Bye-bye.